Good morning, folks. I also want to welcome you to ApacheCon at Home. I will admit I had a little bit of skepticism when this first uh, was pitched as a virtual event. One of the things that I really enjoy is getting to spend time meeting new community members and hanging out with old friends. That's actually been one of my favorite parts of ApacheCon. Uh, and this year, for obvious reasons, we can't do that. We're doing it all virtually. But then I started to see some of the uh, potential and even some of the impact that uh, Rich and Ruth and, and others have been able to put together. I'm personally excited because this year we have more people attending from more places around the world. We have more content than we've ever had and in more languages than we've ever tried to attempt. Uh, so lots of uh, lots of awesome opportunity that's come together because of this virtual uh, ApacheCon. So to those of you who are attending your first ApacheCon, and I just heard Rich say that that's uh, over 89%, I think. Uh, welcome. I think this year will be a little different, but I think it's going to be exciting. And I hope that you're going to take advantage of not just the immense amount of content that's going to be here, but also the unprecedented amount of access that you're going to have to people who work on this software, people who use the software, the community around it. And I hope that like you, you will be spending as much time in the Hopin platform and Slack as possible. And that's what I plan to do over the next couple of days. And I hope that I get a chance to converse with many of you. That said, I'm not really here to talk about ApacheCon. Uh, I'm sure Rich is off wondering why I'm changing from talking about the Apache Software Foundation to covering content that he just covered. But I'm really here to talk about the ASF. And normally at this point, I'd bring up a slide that would have lots of statistics and uh, we'd start delving into things like code velocity and project statistics. And those are important and I will get back to them. But in the past six months or so, the conversations that I've been having with people have been a lot of concern. How is the Apache Software Foundation weathering the pandemic? What's the impact? Is it going to go under? And so I wanna start by talking about the organization itself. And because so many of you are new to ApacheCon, I, I wanna set some fundamental understanding and expectations of what the ASF is. So the Apache Software Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit public benefit charity. We work to release open source code free of charge for the public good. And we've been around for a little over 20 years. And as a nonprofit, as a charity that doesn't sell its software, we give it away for free. Um, that makes us entirely dependent upon our sponsors. And our sponsors are incredibly generous to us and they allow us to operate. And this year with the pandemic going on, frankly, there's been, uh, there's been a couple of sponsors who have been impacted by the pandemic. They've had to either uh, reduce or in some cases even eliminate their sponsorships. But we've also been very fortunate to, uh, to acquire a couple of new sponsors and during the same time period. And so uh, it's also important that you understand that our fiscal year was ending about the time that uh, people were beginning to understand that this was going to be a long-term uh, high impact uh, health event that's gonna impact the world. And so we had a budget already planned. We had a budget ready to go to be approved by the board of directors right as the World Health Organization was declaring a global pandemic. And so we threw that out. We started over and said, what can we eliminate? Obviously, we're going to eliminate lots of travel because there's not going to be an in-person ApacheCon. We can eliminate a lot of other things. And we reduced our budget even more to become uh, more frugal. Uh, and you know, we generally operate frugally anyway, but, uh, but we cut even more for this year and I'm happy to report that the Apache Software Foundation has 
roughly 15 months of cash reserves in place. And that gives us confidence that we can continue to operate. Uh, and again, we're very thankful to our generous sponsors who uh, continue to fund us and allow us to operate. But even with this degree of uncertainty that, uh, that the world's in, we feel like we're in a very good place. So then after people ask about you know, the financial and organizational health of the ASF, their next question is, okay, that's great, but does anyone care about open source in the midst of a pandemic? Uh, is anyone working on it? Are you shipping software? And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of concern that, you know, people are just not going to work on that, especially when you're talking about an all volunteer organization like the ASF is. But since the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic on March 11th, uh, Apache projects have produced almost 500 software releases and that has generated 1,592 release artifacts. And that's just since March 11th. If you look at the number of active committers, active commits that are happening, uh, the pattern is, is pretty consistent with, uh, with what was happening before. And uh, that remarkable consistency is pretty amazing to me. Uh, you can see that roughly the same number of people uh, both committers and authors of code has stayed pretty consistent over that time. And I had a big slide up uh, that had uh, interesting statistics, like the fact that we have 227 million lines of code under our stewardship. We have 200 top level projects. Uh, this year, the Apache Software Foundation graduated eight top level projects. So they essentially moved from the incubator uh, they had proven themselves and the board of directors established them as top level projects. So we continue to grow the number of projects that are, uh, that are producing code and have met our standards. We still have another 47 projects that are working their way through the incubator and trying to establish themselves as top level projects. But I, I also wanna talk about something that's not as exciting. Uh, this year, in the past year, we've moved 14 projects to the attic. Now, the attic isn't where we go to throw away old projects or old code. Uh, the attic is where code moves when the underlying project community decides that the project has reached the end of its life or the community ceases to be able to govern itself and, and maintain itself. And that's an important uh, distinction that the code may be incredibly high quality. It may be very usable but we want to set an expectation with our users because projects and communities uh, have life cycles. And we want our users to have confidence that when they're consuming software from a top level project, that there's an uh, uh, expectation that someone's going to be around to fix bugs, that someone's going to be around to take care of security issues. And we also want to set the expectation when that's not the case. We consider that part of the responsibility for our stewardship of this uh, massive amount of open source code. And, uh, you know, it, it brought to mind another conversation that we recently had. We had a little bit of a soul searching discussion involving uh, exploring what made the ASF valuable and what made us unique. Are we continuing to add value to the ecosystem? And so lots of, lots of things were tossed around as things that we add to the conversation. Uh, you know, we produce high quality software. We produce high quality software that's permissively licensed. Our decision making is transparent and based on consensus. The people who do the work get to make the decisions. Uh, we care so much about the people that one of our mottos is community over code. And we have this history of producing, uh, having good uh, intellectual property hygiene. But the word that stood out to me the most was that we've earned trust. And it's not like all of the other attributes of the ASF and its projects. Instead, uh, that trust has been earned over a number of years. People know what to expect. They know what to expect when they engage with an Apache project. 
They know what to expect when they download Apache software. And I think that speaks volumes. But as I considered that more, I realized, you know, that's something that a collection of volunteers and a collection of volunteers that has changed over time has been able to achieve over a period of over two decades. And they have still earned and retained that trust of the public. I think that speaks volumes about both the past and the future of the Apache Software Foundation. It has me excited about what's coming up next as we continue to grow. And I'm sure that like me, as you're going to be attending all of these uh, sessions at ApacheCon, learning about new and interesting bits of technology, uh, that that's going to be fascinating. But I'd encourage you to take some time, engage with these members of the community, because those volunteers are what makes this possible and what makes the Apache Software Foundation such a special place. Thank you so much. I look forward to engaging with you both on Hapon and Slack. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm going to step away for just a moment now and bring our next keynote speaker on stage in just a moment. <laughs> 